We've all been there. We've spent hours researching a topic, writing about it, think we've nailed it, hit publish, and then nothing. It doesn't even make the top 10 pages of Google. Let's be honest, it takes time to nail the process. But after this email I received from my affiliate manager yesterday, I think I might finally have done just that. Not only did he think that my content was excellent, and you see my head getting bigger here, it also went straight in at position two, when the SERPs were dominated by high DA media sites. Sound familiar? Well, fear not, because today we're going to fix it, as I show you exactly how I plan and write my content to give it the best possible chance of ranking. And quick disclaimer here, I don't actually write all of my content for all of my sites, but in the last month I have got a little bit more hands-on because I had to task one of my main writers with a different project. Now this works for writing reviews, buyer's guides, info content, travel guides, or any other topic. The process is pretty simple. We're just gonna be using a couple of Chrome extensions and Google, plus our own brains, and we're not gonna be using any expensive tools such as SEMrush, Ahrefs, or Surfer SEO. So let's jump in and take a look. So the first stage is the research stage. And essentially what we're trying to do here is to find the optimum search term. Now, quite often at this point, we're gonna to need to weigh up the search volume versus the competition. And sometimes it might be worth going after a lower search volume keyword if the competition is not as tough and we think it's going to be more achievable to rank based on the existing power of our site. Now for this, I use two Chrome extensions. I use SERPworks and Keywords Everywhere. Now both are paid Chrome extensions, but I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't actually know how much they cost because the credits seem to last forever, but I think it's probably in the region of around $10 will last you a good few months. So it really is uh, an amazing tool. They're both amazing tools to use and they're super cost effective. So we're gonna start off by looking at this keyword as an example, best electric toothbrush. I'm looking at UK variants of this, of this keyword, but this will work for all of these countries here, or you can go global. So you can see that keywords everywhere actually tells us the, a, a rough estimation of the monthly search volume for that particular keyword. And in this case, it's 22,200 searches per month but this is probably gonna be pretty competitive. And we can see already we're getting high DA sites. We know already these are gonna be high DA, Telegraph, NY Times. But to be sure, we can switch on our SERPworks tool. And again, we just switch this on up as, a, as a Chrome extension up here. And this gives us all this additional data. Now, what I'm really looking for to begin with is the, the DA of the site. And this isn't the only metric to judge a site by. And it's probably quite an outdated one now, actually, but it does give us an idea. So we can see we've got DA 75, 94, 95, 89, but then we've also got this 37 in here. So this would give us a good indication that actually there's, there's a possibility here with this keyword. And then we see uh, more of a niche site, electricteeth.com, and that's a DA48, still fairly powerful. So we've got a little bit of a mix going on here. What we can also do is we can use Google to actually give us suggestions too. So, you know, if we, if we start typing in, we look at the auto suggest, Best Electric Toothbrush UK for plaque and gums for gums. These are ones that I've searched previously, but they were appearing in here. And then we've got some other suggestions here. So for kids, 2021, 2022. So if we look at the UK variant of this, there's still 1,300 searches per month. Now, does the SERP profile look any different? So I'm gonna take a look at that. We still see there's a lot of high DR and actually DA, and actually the, the top three pretty much are exactly the same. But then this electricteeth.com does appear a little bit higher up. And we're also seeing a, another dental type result here. So it looks like this keyword might be slightly easier to, to rank for. Now, of course, if we were targeting the UK, then we could target both of those keywords with the exact same page. The other thing that we get here, if we, if we look at keywords everywhere is we get these related keywords. So we can look at other variations of it um, and we can load in the metrics and actually see what the search volumes are and we get an awful lot of data here. So we might wanna go a lot more specific. We might want to look at electric toothbrushes under 50, so under 50 pounds, 
uh, for gum disease and, and, and so on. So let's say we take the example of the best electric toothbrush under 50 and see what's coming up now for this. Now we're still seeing the top two are pretty much the same. MSM, which again is high DA, but then we get this one, adentistdaughter.com. It's a DA10. So yes, we've gone from a 20,000 search a month keyword down to a 320 per month keyword, but we're seeing a keyword here that we probably can rank for based on some of the, the other results that we see in here. If some of these results are not specifically optimized for this specific keyword, then that is also an additional opportunity for us. And if we look at these top 10 results here, that the position one is not actually optimized for the under 50 keyword. Neither is this one. This one is, but then again, this one isn't, this one isn't, this one is, and then, and then the rest are. So again, we're still at the research phase here and we've got some decisions to make. We could go for that best electric toothbrush page and include some detailed sections on the best brushes under 50 pounds or $50, or we could just go specifically for that page and target that. Now that's going to depend on the existing power and the authority of your site. If this is a fairly new site, then I'm likely to create a dedicated page for that $50 or 50 pound keyword. If it's got a little bit more authority and it's you know bang on in terms of the niche, then I possibly would go after the bigger keyword and see where that lands and then make a decision on whether to create additional content further down the line. Now the next stage that we're going to look at is the planning of the article itself. So let's say for example that we have decided that we're going to go for Best Electric Toothbrush UK. The first thing we're going to want to try and identify is the word count for our article. Now there are lots of tools that will do this for you but you don't really need them. You can, and, and I, even today, I don't use tools like SERP or SEO. And the SERP works tool actually gives us this information. It tells us the word count of each article. And typically what I'll do here is look at the top three to five results and I'll take an average of those. So we can actually see the top three are very similar. We've got 4.35K, 4.1K and 3.91K. So looking at that, I'm just gonna go with around 4,100 words. Let's take a look at the rest. This is a bit of an outlier. So this has got 15,000 words. Now a lot of that might be user generated content. And some of these are a little bit higher again. But I'm gonna go with the top three here and say this article needs to be in the region of about 4,000 words. The other point to make here is that these words will include all the words on that page. So that could be duplicate content from the sidebar. It could be from the footer, the nav. It will also be any user generated comments and, and that sort of stuff. So to just do bear that in mind, we also get the number of H tags per page. So that's quite useful information to have. So you can see this top one here, doesn't really make use of H2, but it has a lot of H3s. This one just goes with H2s and pretty much so does this one. And this is the format that I would tend to go with. So one H1 and then the rest H2s, and then maybe some H3s if you've got kind of subheadings that go underneath these H2 subheadings. So we might want to go into some of these pages and just get an idea of the content that's in them. Now for this, I like to use the detailed SEO extension. And what we can do here is we can look at the, the title, the description, again, the, the, H date, the H tag data. We can look at just the headings here, which gives us good ideas how to structure our article. And like I said, this one was actually using a lot of H3 tags. So I'm probably not really liking the way that one's set up. So we'll go to the next one. So we'll look at the goodhousekeeping.com. And this does look like it's structured in, in a a more SEO friendly kind of way. So again, we'll look at the, the detailed extension and we can see we've got all these H2 tags here. Now, obviously we're not just gonna copy and paste these. 
but this gives us an idea as the type of content that Google maybe wants to see or expects us to talk about within our content itself. So what I'll do at this stage is I'll take my headings and I'll start to plan them out for the entire article. So I'm actually starting in my head now to have a good idea as to how I want my article structured. Now I'll put these straight into the WordPress editor if I'm writing it in there, or if I'm using a, a word processor, I'll pop it in there or Google Docs or whatever. But I'll have all my headings, essentially all my H2s and possibly my H3 subheadings all kind of laid out for me so I know roughly where I'm going with this article. Now the other thing you want to do is you want to go through the first one or two, maybe three articles on Google, have a read of them, get a feel for the type of content, the type of language that's being used within the articles. So you've got a good understanding of the topic. Now this is worthwhile doing even if you already know the topic inside out because it might just give you some inspiration or some ideas that you might not otherwise have considered. And then you're gonna to want to think about how you can add even more value. So what sort of things would you expect to see in this particular piece of content? Now that might be, I don't know, if it's a review, it might be comparison data, it might be specs, it might be personal opinion after testing, or something else. But the point is you want to go above and beyond and provide as much information as you can to satisfy the search intent um, for that searcher so that they don't need to go anywhere else. Now, if this is unique information that's not available anywhere else, your content is going to stand out. Stage three is the actual writing. Now, of course, this is absolutely paramount when creating content that we actually have to go ahead and write it. But the first thing that I like to do here is to try and match the writing style to the audience and the keyword intent. So is it fun and lighthearted? Is it conversational? Is it authoritative? Is it technical? Or is it a mix of all of those things? We want to make sure that we use language that is appropriate to that particular type of article. So think about any technical language that maybe needs to be included and, and, and try and do that. Now, we also want to not go too far in terms of necessarily just writing from an SEO perspective. So we're not gonna look to keyword stuff or anything like that. And if it helps, don't write for SEO at all. Just start out writing as you would you think it should be written you can always go in and re-optimize it from an seo point of view later but in terms of that seo optimization we just want to make sure that we're utilizing as many of those key ranking factors as possible so making sure that we've got the main keyword in our h1 or our title making sure that is also in the meta title quite often the h1 will pull through into the meta title anyway even if you give a specific meta title also including it in that first paragraph of the written content if at all possible try and include it in at least one of the image titles as well and also look for any internal linking opportunities that might exist to other relevant pages on your site you may also want to include synonyms of the main keyword, and this can also help to reduce the possibility of being over-optimized. Stage four is the publishing stage. Now, you might think this is as simple as just hitting publish, but there's a little bit more to it than that. So the first thing we want to do before we actually hit that publish button is just make sure that we're making the most of the URL. So we want the URL to be optimized in terms of just making sure that we've got that, that keyword in the URL itself with no duplicated words. So for example, we're not gonna have the word review twice in the URL or anything like that. Next, you want to run a site colon search with the keyword for your site. What's gonna happen is Google's gonna give you the top pages that are most relevant to your keyword that you're looking to rank for this new article. And then you can manually assess if it makes sense to internally link from these pages to the newly published article. So in this example, we could look to create internal links from these pages and it would probably make sense, at least the top three, to link from these with a fairly aggressive anchor text to the new article that we're about to publish. 
Then we want to make sure that the new article is no more than three hops or three clicks away from the home page. So it might be that it's within a category page here under beauty, or it might be directly linked from the nav itself or, or, or somewhere from the home page. then that's absolutely fine. But if it's orphaned or if it's more than three hops or three clicks away from that home page, then that is not ideal from uh, an SEO point of view. The next step is to analyze and react. Now, if there's one thing that doing this whole YouTube thing has taught me, it's that titles matter when it comes to click through rates. And you might have noticed that when I publish a video, sometimes three or four days later, I'll update a title because the click through rate isn't great. And that means the title probably wasn't brilliant. And so I'll amend it and then look to try and improve that click through rate. Now, exactly the same thing applies for niche sites or any any websites for that matter um, in terms of the meta titles that are displayed within Google and the effect that that has on click-through rate. Now to identify pages with a low click-through rate, we can use Google Search Console and then we can try and apply different variations of meta titles to look to increase that click-through rate in the SERPs. Now to make sure you are using Google Search Console to its full, make sure you check out this video next where I give you a complete walkthrough on how to use it. And if you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button for me, guys, and uh, subscribe if you're not already so you can get more info on niche sites and content and all that good SEO type of stuff. Thanks for watching, guys, and good luck with your projects.